When Betty Boop made her debut in August 1930, nobody knew how popular she would become. Originally an anthropomorphic French poodle, she transformed into a human character by 1931. Her floppy dog ears became hoop earrings and her dog nose became a button nose. Max Fleischer told animators that he wanted a caricature of Helen Kane. Betty was first voiced by Margie Hines and later by Bonnie Poe, Mae Questrel, and Anne Little. In cartoons from 1930 to 1932, Betty Boop took on the traits of Mae Questrel, including her ability to impersonate people. In May 1932, Helen Kane sued Max Fleischer and Paramount Publics Corporation for $250,000 for deliberate caricature that created unfair competition due to the exploitation of her image and personality. She also accused Betty Boop voice actresses of stealing her boo boo ba doop phrase. Kane had risen to fame in the 1930s as the Boop Oopa Doop Girl, but by 1931, her fame was on the decline. The trial started in New York on April 17, 1934. Kane's lawyer showed Betty Boop cartoons and Kane movies to prove the similarities. Fleischer testified that Betty Boop was the creation of his imagination with details added by studio artists. Margie Hines, the original Betty Boop voice, stated that the way Betty spoke was modeled after her own baby-speaking voice. When Helen Kane testified, she took her coat off to show the shape of her figure. Her lawyer claimed Betty Boop had the same shape. Kane testified that her first use of Boop Boop a Doop had been in fall 1928 during her Paramount theater engagement. She said, it's a form of rhythm that I created. If you know anything about music, you know there's a bar of music at the end, and at the end, there's a stop. Well, instead of letting the orchestra play, I used to say boop boop ba doop. The defense alleged that Helen Kane had stolen her act from previous musicians who had been doing the boop boop ba doop style singing long before she had. Anne Little, one of the actresses that voiced Betty Boop, testified that nine years earlier she had been performing baby songs in the Greenwich Village Follies. These songs included break lines like Poo Poo Padoop. Clarence Williams, a New Orleans musician, testified that he had been doing hot licks since 1915, long before Helen Kane. Arthur Evans, an employee of singer Rudy Valley, testified he had heard a singer using boop boop doop eight years earlier. The most damaging testimony came from theatrical manager Lou Bolton. Bolton testified that his protege was Baby Esther, also known as Little Esther. Her real name was Esther Lee Jones. Esther was a child performer who lived in Chicago and was known for interpolating her songs with scat lyrics. She interpreted popular songs with a mixture of seriousness and childish mischief. Esther began her career in the early 1920s. Bolton saw one of her performances and took her on as a client in 1924. Esther performed all over the United States throughout the 1920s. Esther's booking agent was Tony Shane, who also served as Helen Kane's booking agent. Bolton claimed that Kane and Shane saw Esther's performance at the Everglade Club in New York in April 1928, before Kane's show opened at the Paramount Theater. An early test sound film of Esther was submitted as evidence. Esther went to Europe in 1929, where she performed for royalty. Bolton was fired as her manager, and Esther remained in Europe. Esther famously performed at the Moulin Rouge in Paris. Esther was so beloved in Europe that when she was refused service at an American-run restaurant in Sweden, Swedish dignitaries spoke up in defense of Esther, which forced the restaurant to shut down. By the 1930s, Esther was touring South America with noted jazz musician Gordon Stretton. 
By the time of the Kane vs. Fleischer trial, Esther had returned to the United States and was performing in Louisville. Judge Edward J. McGoldrick ruled that the vocables boop boop badoop and similar sounds had been used by other performers prior to the plaintiff, and that the plaintiff had failed to sustain either cause of action by proof of sufficient probative force. Helen Kane had lost her case. After the Kane vs. Fleischer trial, there was a rush at the copyright office by performers trying to patent singing tricks. They were all denied. Kane appealed the decision and lost again. A New York appellate court ruled that Kane could not copyright a voice. The judge's decision banned Kane from appealing again. Helen Kane passed away in 1966. Esther Jones never sued Fleischer Studios. She left show business as a teenager. Details of her later life are scarce. She passed away in 1984. Fleischer Studios retired Betty Boop in 1939. Shortly after, the studio was acquired by Paramount. In 1955, Paramount sold their old cartoon shorts to a television syndicator. Betty Boop was mainly visible in cameos and merchandise. In 1985, there was a CBS TV special titled The Romance of Betty Boop. In 1988, she made a brief cameo in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Since 2021, her licensing has been owned by global icons. Betty Boop continues to live on 90 years after the Kane vs. Fleischer trial.